Hi, and welcome to class five of our photography course. So this is the last class before the midterm break, which is only a week. But unfortunately, we had to split this class into two. I mean, it's just a lot of subject to cover. And we really wanted to give Tim a chance to show multiple different ways of approaching portrait photography. So we gave him three challenges, as you'll see, and he then tackled each one of them very, very successfully. <laughs> you'll get half of it now and the other half just after the break in week six. Enjoy, this is a real cracker of a, uh, a class. You're gonna love this. Hi, and welcome to this week's photography class. And uh, I'm here at Tim's studio. I haven't found Tim yet, but he's here somewhere. But uh, we have a special guest with us this week, our own FX Guide TV, Angie. How are you, Angie? Very well, thank you, Mike. How are you? Now, Angie, an unusual day for you because you're not going to be actually talking or presenting. I know, I know. I'm just sort of being a, a not a puppet, but just standing and smiling, I think. I, th I think you're being the focus of our attention, but not oh, actually nice the focus one. of our uh, actual presentation. Excellent. And, and these guys get to watch the magic that happens. So we're going <laughs> to actually transform. be finding Tim in a second and doing a portrait session with Angie. So these are some uh, publicity shots for Angie and she's graciously agreed to let us uh, come and film her having those uh, portraits taken. So we'll be following through as Tim uh, looks how to light Ange, the decisions he makes about doing that and of course the actual nature of portrait photography. And during all of this, poor Ange is going to unfortunately be, uh, be pretty much <laughs> having to sit quietly and patiently while we, uh, we work around her. But we, we apologise for that, Ange. That's all right. I'll enjoy it. Yeah? I'll learn something too as well. So that's good. Thanks so much for you as well, Chris, for coming in today. Chris does all our hair and makeup. She's terrific. Thank you. So um, we'll leave these guys go on and I'll try and find Tim. Hey, Tim. Oh, good day, Mike. How are you? Nice to be back in yeah. the studio. Yeah, terrific. Hey, um... Portrait photography today. We've got uh, our own Ange from uh, FX Guide TV. Uh, what are you thinking of doing? Well, we're going to start with some head and shoulders, so from here to here, that sort of thing. There's a publicity headshot for it, and then we'll do something else as well after that. Now, what are the basics of sort of portrait photography, other than the obvious of like getting it in focus? I guess. I mean, yeah. what, what are you sort of trying to do with portrait photography? Well, I'd like to get it in focus, if I can. Uh, well, really, it's about the person's face. It's about what the character behind the person is, that's what we're looking to capture. Uh, so I'm going to look at Ange when uh, she's finished in hair and makeup and then see what we can do with the light. Essentially the lighting will have a, a main light and a full light from the front and then we'll have some other lights behind doing background and hair. Now when we were doing say uh, outdoor stuff we spoke about the angle that the light hit to reveal texture. Are we trying to sort of enhance texture or hide texture when we're doing faces and portraits? Well, we want to define the shape of the face really clearly. So we'll use a soft light so we don't pick up too much texture. The makeup's going to help us with that. Uh, but we really want to carry the, the shape of the face and the character in the face, uh, which we're going to use the light to mould around the face to highlight the best parts of it. And, if, and the, the eyes are really important in portrait photography, aren't they? Tell yeah. me about that. Yeah. Well, if nothing else is sharp, the eyes have got to be sharp. I think that's the, the key to it. Uh, the eyes are the window to your soul, and so you need to have absolute sharpness at that point. And I like to see a little bit of light reflection in the eyes, so a little bit of either the main light or the fill, some catch light in the eyes that gives it that little sparkle. So we'll look sort of to like achieve a, a those. Ping in the a eyes. Ping in the eyes, yeah. Otherwise, if you see photographs of people outside in the sun, directly overhead, two black pools, completely nothing in there at all. So I'd like to see a little bit of life in the eyes, which you get with a bit of uh, reflection off the surface. Now, uh, Angie's complexion, she's obviously uh, like, has a darker hair colour than, a, than mm -hmm. a blonder, lighter hair colour. Does that you know, influence you at all? Or? Well, it's going to make sure we do one thing, and that is to make sure her dark hair separates tonally from the dark background, if we use that. So I will probably use a hair light, which will provide a rim of lighting around top of the hair and down the side. Now uh, let's come to the logistics of the shoot. What are you actually going to be photographing on? Um, what sort of camera? What sort of uh, gear? Digital cameras we've used before and here in the studio we're going to shoot tethered as we did in the beginning. Uh, t the camera's tethered to the computer so as I take the pictures I'll come onto the computer screen then we'll all see them and make judgments on what we should do and uh, then proceed through the shoot that way. I mean portrait photography is obviously a place that you could, and people historically have, used filters. 
Would you be looking at using any filters today, or is that something you've got to done in post now? Well, it used to. Uh, used to on film, we would use either a slightly soft focus filter or a fog filter. Uh, but I'd prefer to do that in post now, which gives me the, not only the control of how much filter, but also localised filtering. A process whereby some parts, for example, of the skin might be softened down with a bit of soft focus, but we can leave those eyes sharp. I think there's a trend in advertising photography to almost take that post-processing too far. You mm. get this almost plastic skin by, by photoshopping and healing out every single blemish. Um, and obviously that is particularly popular with the person that has the blemishes, but it doesn't really produce a lot of humanity to the picture. No, does it? no, it doesn't. I think the skin looks like a doll's skin, a plastic skin. Um, Not that Ange has bad the, skin. Ange has magnificent skin. I'm talking about her. No. But in general. In general. Uh, so we'd like to, well makeup takes us part of the way there and then in post we might take away any little spots that, uh, that we don't want to have. But I don't want to make dramatic changes. I'm not going to really re-sculpture the nose or change the shape of the ears. I'm not going to change a lot of the character of the person um, for this kind of shoot. Uh, sometimes for, you know, especially cosmetic shoots, they might do a little bit more retouching there. Well, let's say that uh, we're looking at sort of the broad brushstrokes of when you do this type of work uh, in your particular line. Um, I guess a, an obvious place would be like corporate type work for, uh, you know, annual general reports and that kind of thing. Is that? Is yes. That a... Yeah, we generally get into reproduction in one form or another, a corporate brochure, uh, perhaps a catalogue if we're using models uh, as illustrative photography with uh, products or clothes and, and uh, then certainly direct corporate shoots, a uh, publicity shot for the managing director. Now, many of those, I presume, are done in the studio, or, or sorry, in the um, office of the you know, CEO involved. Mm. Does that present special problems? Uh, no, not really. We'll take lighting out there and we'll set up lights and shoot. It actually provides an interesting opportunity to pick up different backgrounds, uh, especially uh, if it's a CEO in an office. I like to do the head and shoulders as a corporate shoot, but also like to get a wider view if I can, okay. which is a little bit more of the man and his environment. Do you go for like a short depth of field maybe to get separation from the background? Or? Uh, for the tighter shots, yes. Yeah, definitely. You don't want a busy cluttered background interfering with the face. Okay. Well, uh, we're going to be setting up in this space, mm -hmm. which obviously is your studio. We've been here before. Yep. Um, what sort of lights are you going to use to actually light and... Well, my studio flashes. So I've got uh, so a softbox uh, I'm just putting together yep. here for the main light. So it's a flash hit in there and a fairly soft uh, light will come out of that. And we'll talk about where we're going to position it in relation to uh, Angie and which way she's facing. And then I'll use some other flash heads here for hair light and uh, background light. And I think the, the system that we've got with these flashlights is quite sort of uh, pleasant to be photographed under it because it's not really a glaring light, is it? It's like low until the hit and... That's right. Well, when we turn it on, there's a, there's a modelling lamp in there which allows me to see what the shadows and reflections are doing. And then when we take the pictures, the flash goes off. We keep those modelling lamps turned down pretty low so, uh, so the model's not too distracted by the uh, bright light and the place doesn't heat up too much. And are there any other considerations in terms of the client? I mean, Angie's a professional, of course, so, so she's probably a little easier to, photo to photograph than others. But if you were dealing with someone like a CEO that's perhaps less comfortable having their photograph taken, are there any tips for they're approaching that as far as the client goes? Well, uh, I like to make it a pleasant, try and make it as pleasant an experience as possible for the subject. So I'll try and keep things pretty light-hearted, a uh, bit of a joke, a bit of a laugh, and hopefully make the subject feel relaxed. Uh, I often liken it with subjects to saying, look, no matter what you think this is, it could always be worse. Just imagine it could be, you could be at the dentist. And one person said once, oh, actually, I don't mind the dentist. So that fell flat. But <laughs> I like to keep it pretty light. Now imagine that I was, uh, I didn't know you and I called up to get you to come in to do the uh, board of directors at my company. Um, time is obviously always going to be an issue, especially if you're going to run through a, a whole board. Mm. How long would you want to allow for a CEO shot in his office, assuming no you know, weird and wonderfuls? Mm. Well, look, we could probably, having set up things beforehand, so perhaps in a boardroom or meeting room or somewhere in his offices, and then I've worked out my lighting, worked out the shadows, worked out the exposure, and then we could wheel the uh, CEO in, uh, take quite a few different uh, frames. I don't think we keep him longer than about 10 minutes. Right. 
So would you have an assistant normally when you're doing that? Yeah. So you and an assistant would set up, would that be like an hour or so to set up? or what would uh, Well, I've got pretty quick at pretty it quick. over the years. And so, uh, no, we could set up in half an hour. Okay, so half an hour and then you'd mm. bring the CEO, obviously mm. keeping them for a short amount of time helps with their general kind of yeah. thing. But you were telling me uh, a little while ago when we were talking about this that the compression of the amount of time you have to process, sometimes they actually want you to leave photos there on the day, don't they? Yes. Yeah, that can be a little bit of a nuisance because I would like to take time in post-production, make sure I've chosen the best files and then done any little touch-up if I can. But look, if they need to have photos that day and I can do it on the laptop and uh, write files out to a CD, then I'm happy to do that. I think one of the things we're joking about is that they nearly always want every photo you've got mm. and you never want to do that, right? No, no, there's always, I won't just do it, you know, a total dump from the uh, camera to the client. Um, for a start, when we're setting up, I'm firing the camera, you know, we're making frames to test and testing the light and testing the exposure. So we'll accumulate a lot of frames that just won't be suitable for anybody. And so I've got to do an initial edit on those first and of course I want to take out the blinks, the funny expressions and anybody who's leapt in behind and put rabbit ears over the uh, CEO, I'll take those ones out as well. Yeah, it doesn't matter that it isn't your fault if there's a bad photo of the CEO, it's not mm. going to rest well for repeat business, no matter no. how many good ones there are. No, 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 we don't, that's right. We, th they should uh, be flattered by the photograph, I think, so I don't want to give them anything that won't do that. And uh, finally, just before we get to Anne, she's obviously uh, young and has terrific quality of skin. Is there anything that you uh, think about in terms of photographing, say, if we're going to be stereotypical for a second, uh, an older male who obviously doesn't have anywhere near the, the uh, collagen elasticity of the skin mm. that, that a younger woman mm. would have? Well, <clears throat> not we can do anything about that. I think if there's, if there's texture, in the, uh, texture in the skin and the face, then that's part of the character of the person. But one thing we do, though, is just powder down a little bit of shine. You know, if I like to have a nice soft light which uh, uh, lights the face well, uh, it can give uh, a bit of hot spot on the forehead or on the cheek, so I might just pat that down with a bit of powder. And again, that's something I like to, if I do it or my assistant does it, we certainly joke with the client if it's an older man. Yeah. Yes, I can imagine. I mean, it does make a big difference, doesn't it? That, just, that, that sheen that you get on a forehead, mm. while natural when you're standing around, does actually look kind of odd in a in a uh, corporate type environment. That, that's right. And the thing about the photograph, of course, is that it's captured and it stays there and you can look at it forever. So little details like that are worth noting before you shoot so that uh, what is captured and kept and, and used um, is complementary to the, to the sitter. Okay, well, I think Andrew's nearly out of makeup, so um, mm -hmm. this is your space. I'll yes. get out of your way. All right. And, uh, let and you I'll, set it, I'll set it up. Thanks. Okay, Tim, so we've got Ange sitting in. Thanks, Ange. <laughs> and uh, we've got some lights here. We've got a nice backdrop, which is going to be um, fired off this, right? Uh, which is going to give us a nice kind of motley background. But just walk us through these other lights, which are obviously principal to Angie's. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, we're going to start with the main light. And this soft light coming in from the side will give us some difference between light and shade in the face and provide a nice round light to the face, not, uh, not, make it, not be too harsh on her. Right, and you're coming in from her cam of the camera right camera side right. because her hair goes to the... Her hair goes a little bit to our left, so but uh, also I think, I think this is her better side. Okay. But we'll try it the other way and better we'll, side, we'll see. What I'm going to do first, Mike, so we can build it with yep. Angie's permission, is that I'm just going to make a frame, first of all, with only the main light. Oh, great idea. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to stand back out here so I'm yep. not casting any shadows. So uh, we're actually going to be, I'm just going to talk while you're doing that, we're actually going to be working yep. with three lights on Angie, yep. but you're only going to have one of them initially, and this light, which doesn't do anything for Angie, but just lights up the background It's a separate her. light on the background, that's right. Yep. Now this mm. is meant to be what I call almost the uh, high school yearbook photo, in the sense that it's meant to be a fairly... Uh, 
straight interpretation of uh, portrait photography? Uh, yes, it's fairly conventional in terms of uh, the structure. It's going to be head and shoulders. But to give you your benefit, that's because I asked you to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, and it's, a, it's, look, it's a perfectly nice thing to do. We will really work on making some variations to the light and to the pose to make it uh, more interesting as well. That's what I wanted to see. So now so, what are you reading on the meter? So I'm reading an aperture of f8. On f8. Uh, yeah. Just above Angie there. So that's the aperture we'll start with and we'll see how it looks. Okay. Now this is just with the main light on its own. Okay. And what we'll see is light and you see how it's quite dark on the left side oh, of yeah, the face? Definitely. And of course no light going off in the background. Now what I'm going to do now, Mike, is just add the fill light into the mix. Now the fill light comes from above the camera here. It's going to come from more or less right on axis, just slightly above the camera. And it's going to add light to make sure I've got light, catch light in the eyes and add light to the shadow side of the face. So this will be our eye ping light that I was referring to earlier, was it? Uh, yes, well actually we'll get, a, we'll get a light reflection from the main light as right. well. And then uh, this will fill out, obviously, but given the inverse square laws of lights, the one that's much, much closer is going to be much more dominant, right? Well, yes, it's going to be brighter, uh, that's true. Um, and this fill light will just have a, a slightly soft effect on the shadow. So we'll make a capture there. And so you see here how we've got a little bit more light on the uh, Oh yeah, vastly less uh, dramatic on, uh, on that. The next thing I'm going to do is add the hair light. Because at the moment we're, we're losing her hair. That's right, because it's dark against into the dark the back. background. Yep, okay. And this light I've got a honeycomb grid on it. There's this one up here. Yep. And this light's just going to come down from behind and light the back of her hair and across the shoulders. What difference would it make if it didn't have the honeycomb in? It would be uh, less directional? Uh, well, it would be similar on her, but it's there so it doesn't flare off into the camera. Oh, okay, sure. Save you having to put cutters up. That's right. So this is now, what, three lights, right? Now we've got the three lights on, so Anne, give me that lovely smile again. Like that. Very nice. Okay, well that's really made her hair shine. That makes it look like, uh, like uh, Chrissy's earned her job uh, with the hairstyling because that's it looks so much... Uh, absolutely fabulous. But am I thinking that we're still not firing on the light behind her? That's right. One right. more light to add. Okay. So... But that sheen really helps, doesn't it? It does. It, it lights up the, the hair very nicely. Now, the background light, and I'll just turn the modelling light on here for you. It's a single head that's behind Angie and just pointing towards the background. I guess what I'm not used to from cinema work is that the light level that I'm standing in right now seems really low because, of course, when the flash goes off, it gets really hot. Mm. Um, so the relative lights are uh, relatively the right strength to what the flash lighting would be. Does that make sense? But like the modelling uh, lights are relative, so you can believe what you're seeing? Yes, yes they are. I like right. to keep things equal so that if I'm setting up the lights from scratch, I like to have the modelling light strength proportional to the flash yep. output. So if I turn the flash up on one head, the modelling light goes up as well. And then I can see my difference. I'll also test it with a metre and then ultimately look at it on the screen. Now what, this, um, what ASA are you entering in the meter for the... 100 for this camera okay. in this situation. And I'm using a shutter speed of a 60th of a second. And that's interesting. Is there any reason you pick a 60th? Is it, um... Um, <laughs> as I said before, Mike, uh, the camera might synchronise with flash at 125th or 250th of a second, but uh, I'm a little bit conservative on that. A 60th is safe with me. I'm, not, I'm guaranteed a flash sync. And for an exposure under flash, there won't be any difference between a 60th and 125th uh, in recording the available light. And we're not really worried about Ange moving, so there can't be any concerns not, about... Not worried about Ange moving, no, she looks perfectly happy, <laughs> don't you? Right there. Okay, well let's now, see it now with the fourth light. With the, with the light on the background, and the light on the background also has a little honeycomb grid on it, so it's creating a pool of light behind Angie's head. So it should be brighter down low, and then graduating up to slightly darker towards the top of frame. Now let's see if I've done that right. 
Okay, Angie, a bit of a smile at me. That's lovely. That's very nice. I'll get you very slightly to lean over towards your left. Yeah, just up about there. And I'm just going to change the angle just ever so slightly and recompose that. And then let's have that smile again right there. Okay, lovely. So there we have it, Mike, a fairly classic portrait as far as the lighting ratio. And it seems uh, like Angie's hair is kind of, is, is framing to say, that use that term, her face, isn't it? Like yes. Really that's... getting the dark and the light mm. build to, to really model around, make it look very attractive. It does, yeah. No, it's, it's, uh, it's working out very well. I'm going to tilt the light that's on the background. I'm just going to tilt that down a little bit. So it allows the top of the picture to go a little bit darker. It keeps the bottom of the still keeps the bottom of the picture brighter for me. Now you've obviously got her at an angle of about 40 degrees to the lens, which is the classic angle that somebody's at in a shot like this. But is that simply so it looks less like a mug shot? Because well, if, if can I just manhandle you for a second there, Ange? If we turned her forward on, would that? Well, it's that's right. It's straight on doesn't really look very good. It's, it's, it's very square to the shoulders. And when you look at classical portraiture, you'll see the shoulders turned one side or the other. Yep. Now, what we're using here is what we call short lighting, principally where the, uh, the light is coming from the side of the face that she's facing to, the side of the picture that she's facing to. So Angie is facing out to her left, and the lighting is coming from that side. Right. Now. <clears throat> what that means is that the open side of the face, the side of the face that's close to the camera, has the shadow on it. So I see as Angie turns her head slightly to her right that I see more of the shadow side of the face than the highlight side. Yeah, that's interesting because you, yeah, it's not like you've got the light hitting her from the front, therefore, no. it's almost like you've got the shade to camera. That, that's right. So that, that is the, the classic. Uh, or Rembrandt lighting style. Uh, it's the most uh, He was a photographer, was he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, <laughs> yes he was. He painted with light. Okay. Uh, now, the other thing I've got Angie to do, while well, she's turned, not square on the camera, but turned slightly <clears throat> to our right, camera right, is that she's also leaning forward towards the light a little bit. Now, the trick here is that it puts a nice tilt on the axis of the body. So rather than being straight up and down, looking at the camera like that, by turning towards the camera slightly and then leaning forward, it puts a nice tilt on the axis of the body. Now, how, sorry, how are you going in terms of headroom? I mean, is there any kind of rules of thumbs of where her eyes are? Are you trying to position that where in the frame? Or are you thinking it'll be cropping later? Uh, no, I'm framing this up to a head and shoulders pretty much as the camera, in the camera proportions, which is three by two. Uh, if anything, classically for a, a corporate shot, we might take a little bit of height out of it. Uh, I'll usually take it out from the bottom, but uh, it fr <coughs> frames up quite. But it frames up quite nicely as a vertical head and shoulders. Now, just from my own eye, this seems to be. If this was one unit distance away, this light here seems to be almost two, and that one seems to be about five. But of course, as we discuss inverse laws, as you get away a meter, it's actually more than you know double yeah. the effect. Yeah, that's right. The light drops by, a, a, every time you double the distance, the light intensity drops by a quarter. Okay. So, so this is sort of like one, a quarter, and that's got to be about, a, what, a sixteenth? Well, that's right. This is, this is much less. This is just to illuminate a little bit of fill. There's also some fill coming from, because it's, we're in a white studio, so there's a little bit of bounce coming around as well. It's also the case that the flash heads I've got, and I've tricked you here, Mike, flash heads I've got aren't all on <laughs> equal power. Oh, okay. So, Although the uh, two lights from the front are on uh, equal power, yep. so they are proportional to the modern light, the pack that's driving the background and the hair light, I've got on uh, slightly less power, so it's not doing, it's just rimming the hair slightly, uh, but not being as powerful as the front light. But it would still be, this light would be the most powerful, that's the second yes. and that's the third? Yes, approximately right, yeah. Okay. yeah. So let's take some shots. You happy, Ange? Uh-huh. Okay. All right, so I've tilted the background light down a little bit, which has left the top of this frame a little bit darker. Otherwise, looking very, very pretty, very nice. Uh, 
you know, she's so good, I think we've got it in one. Yeah. But now I'm going to take some other frames, <laughs> other frames, just vary the pose slightly and uh, we'll work around that. Still in our, what we're calling, corporate or, or uh, high school yearbook kind of classic lighting, right? Uh, yes, that's, it's not at all dramatic. It's, it's very not dramatic yet. But actually, it's Ange, for you it must be pretty, it's not hot here, is it? Like there's no actual no. heat coming off these. It's, no, no. It's um, quite relaxing. Now, I bought in a little old frame here because it's just the right height for you to lean your, your elbows against and just allow that elbow to drift out away a little bit like that. And this broadens things out at the bottom of the picture for me nicely. Okay, that's a nice smile. And I might get you to turn even in the chair further around towards your left. Yep. Yeah, and I'll just slide this in nice and close so that you bring both elbows out onto the chair like that. Yeah. Then just with a straight back and then leaning forward out towards the light. And just turning your face around towards me slightly more. Okay, so I'm going to give that a bit of a tweak there. I'd have to say, Tim, that as great as these photos are looking, they still don't feel very Ange-like having... Ah, uh, what, I think they're, they're, they're terrific shots, but I'm looking forward to, to round two when you get to, uh, to break some rules. Yeah. That's nice. Now, there's the other classic one we could do, is just allow your left hand to come up to your face. Like that. My nails. So, <gasps> like me. That one. Yep, yep. That's fine. Now most of your nails are hidden. That's not a problem. So, just allowing the smile straight towards camera like that. Yeah. So it looks like mm -hmm. it looks like uh, <clears throat> I've seen these photos before because these are common techniques used to produce good, uh, solid photography work that you might see in, in the environments we've been discussing, isn't it? I mean, yes. These are um, presumably almost global kind of things we would apply to most situations of a classic portrait mm. nature, yeah? Well, that, that's right. And they'd, you know, they'd be satisfactory for a you know, very wide number of uh, applications, whether it's uh, you know, a brochure or small headshot for perhaps a... So, not that we're going to do this, but if we had four other members of the board of directors that Angie's on, we could almost swap in people to a similar lighting setup mm. because it's not really to Angie that you've lit so much as it is Angie's form and direction. Would that be fair to say? Well, th that's right. Yeah, we could. I would make perhaps make subtle changes if if people yeah. are substantially a different shape. I mean, if you know, if it was a much much larger person, then you know we'd change the angle of light slightly to uh, accommodate that. So now, <laughs> what I'm going to do now is start to make things a little bit more dramatic and I'm going to start with by taking the fill light away completely so we'll leave the background light and the hair light and the main light on but I'm going to remove the fill light completely and this will leave us a little bit more contrast a little bit more light and shade okay so just give me a smile and just allow your hand to rest in there like that that's nice just allow the, oops, allow the fingers to come up the face touch as well Okay, up like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Lovely. Just hold it right there for me. That's very nice. Another technique we can use, Mike, and here is uh, where I can uh, use your help. Let's get you to come around beside me in front of the camera. Okay. Because the photos. Now I'm here for comic relief, am I? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> the photos we've taken of Angie so far, she's not been looking at the camera. Now we're going to do somewhere she's slightly looking off camera. And this might be a kind of picture that you could use in a situation where uh, a quote appears under a photograph in a brochure. So it could be that you know the person's Qantas te magazine telling the story, and we're just talking to the head of the HR department about That's hiring practices. Kind That's of. right. So am I you, yes, you're smiling, and, and but it's part of an interview, so therefore we'd expect you not to look, look at the lens because you're HR manager of uh, HR puff and stuff, and you just want to. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. The hand up there like that is good too. For me. Okay. All right. Okay. There's okay. a few like that. She's incredibly photogenic, she isn't is, she? Yes, yes, yes. Looking good. <laughs> We're yet to get a bad photo out of Ange. Oh. So we've done that with the light that causes the shadow side almost to be the camera. What, what happens if we do it the other way around? Well, that's what I'm going to do now. We're going to move the main light over to the left of frame. Right. Now, Angie, you stay exactly where you are. Is there a... You head to turn towards the camera slightly. 
Is there an equally clever term for this as the one you used before? <laughs> yes, we call broad lighting. Broad so lighting? The light is uh, coming to the broad side of the face. So you're looking with your face slightly, still slightly turned towards uh, camera right. Okay, now that sort of photograph you'll see has um, the, the broad light or the left side of the face uh, is the side that's picking up all the light. Now, I'm not a real fan of that because it's too, uh, there's too much light on the wide side of the face. So I much yeah. prefer it if we swing Angie around to face the light so that you're facing out towards that way. And we'll bring our the executive portrait frame <laughs> to uh, you yeah, to rest on as well. So it's back to short lighting again, but this time facing out to camera left. So that's the. So now we get to see if you were right about saying that the other side was her best side. That looks quite nice. Oh, and the answer is she doesn't have a bad side. That's you? right. Now both sides, are, both sides are her best side. Unlike me, where I think my backside is my best side. <laughs> so hey, I resemble that remark. <laughs> So, okay, so Angie, your eyes straight towards the camera here, oops, and what happens when the photographer says, oops, I just jump focus there for a moment, so let's pull you back in, and uh, that's terrific, so just turn your shoulders towards me a little bit, and again, just allow that left elbow to come back towards your body there, so it opens up the shot for me nicely, oops, okay, that's very nice. Okay, well now, as... As terrific as these shots look, I have to say they don't feel very Angie-esque. Knowing Angie as I do, these, these are um, terrific, technically beautiful. But, I, but I'm looking forward to seeing what you can do to uh, free it up a bit. <laughs> okay, well let's, let's get things moving a bit. We'll just do a little bit of adjustment to the hair and makeup. And I think we're going to change your outfit as well. Okay. Well, just quickly, I'm going to give you this week's assignment. So clearly it's going to be on portraiture, right? <laughs> so what I want you to do is do three different portraits of the same subject. Now, this class is week five, which you've just seen, and week six coming up, but you've got the midterm break in the middle. So do three completely different treatments of the same subject. It has to be the same subject. And I want you to do that before you see class six, and then you can see how Tim solved the same brief. So Tim's brief was straight kind of corporate photo, could be school yearbook, whatever. And then we wanted a fun and funky Rolling Stone kind of thing. And they wanted a very serious actress thing. So you can use those three briefs if you want, or you can come up with your own three briefs. But if you come up with three briefs that aren't corporate, funky, and serious, please tell me what they are so that we have your three different portraits. Look forward to seeing those as Tim does in the forums, and then I'll catch you after the midterm break. See ya.